Hi and welcome to my channel. I'm Redneck Computer Geek and today we'll be installing a vacuum fuel pump on a Briggs & Stratton 18.5 Intec. This particular pump we're installing today is Briggs & Stratton number 799056. But this particular pump is also interchangeable with two other Briggs & Stratton numbers 692026 496257. And I'll include those numbers in the description along with a link to where I purchased this particular pump in case you'd like to follow that. So in order to do this install, it's pretty simple. Basically, it's got a 3 8 nut in the top. You just need to know which line is which. You'll, If you have the original Briggs & Stratton snap rings, you'll need a pair of flat nose and if you happen to have hose clamps that have been interchanged onto your lines, then you'll just need a regular flathead screwdriver. So, let's get started. First, the big thing that I end up getting questions about is people will find these and somebody has them hooked up wrong, or they don't have, or they're not hooked up when they find the engine and so they don't know where to connect them. So we're going to cover that first before we remove the old pump. Alright, so when you're looking at the pump, you've got your mounting bolt here, and you've got your mounting bolt up here. This line, coming into the center of the pump, this line goes over across and circles in to your oil fill, and that's your vacuum line. This line coming out of the back comes around, and this goes to your gas tank. In this case, I'm on my testing stand, so it goes to this particular tank here. These stands are really easy to build, actually. I'll include a link for that also. And then, on the front, you'll find this one here facing towards the carburetor, and this comes around and goes into your carb. Now, if you buy the particular kit that I'll include in the description, it comes with the pump, and this is another way that you can tell whether you have an old pump or not. On a new pump, you can see that brass and copper vent right there. If you look at this old pump, it's all blackened over, and actually you can't even see any of the grating. So that'll tell you how new the pump is. And if you buy this particular kit, it comes with this hose. Now you can use a hose, just a regular fuel line hose. The problem is it won't have this pre-kink section in it and you may end up having issues or the hose will end up draping down and get into stuff. So if you buy a kit with a pre-kinked hose, it makes life a lot easier. So otherwise than that, I'm going to put the camera back on the tripod and we'll get it swapped out. Okay, so the first thing I'd like to note is that before you ever disconnect the fuel line, you should either have a container that you can drain it off into, or in this case, I have a fuel shutoff that's been installed on my test stand, so I won't lose very much in between here and here. But in either case, you want to detach this and make sure you have a container to drain it off into. Now, you want to be careful because this is on plastic. Sometimes if they're stuck, like this one seems to be a little bit stuck, you can take a pair of pliers and lightly, yet again lightly, go back and forth and it'll pop right off. So from there we can set that aside. Now keep in mind this line here also is going to be filled with gas, plus you're going to have the gas that's topping off the carburetor. So when you go to take this out, you also need to have a container to drain it in. Um, this won't have anything in it because I was originally running this engine just off a direct feed from a gravity tank. But if you were doing this on one that had been used, this would have gas in it and you would need to drain that off also. And disconnect that from your carburetor. And last but not least, we have our vacuum line. 
that should just pull right off. Now we remove our two bolts and we should be good to go. And again, these bolts, if they're factory, are 3 8 Now, as stated before, we have our vacuum, we have our gas in, and we have our gas out. Now when you're tightening these up, this plastic tends to be really brittle, so do not over tighten. Once it starts to snug up, give it just a tiny bit more and then call it good. So we've got our vacuum line coming in from over where our oil dipstick is. We've got our gas line coming in up above. And don't forget to put your C-clamp or your clips on. And we've got our hose that came with it. Remember before trying to put it on to put your clips that came with it on the hose. Otherwise you get it on there and have to take everything back off. There we are. I prefer to put the carburetor side on first just because I find it easier to have the flexibility there. Then from there, connect the other side. And at this point, we should be able to add some gas and go for it. So as you could see there, it took it a few rotations in order to build up. So keep that in mind when you go to start this up, you're gonna need a good battery because it takes quite a few rotations of the starter in order to build enough vacuum pressure in order to start siphoning the gas down through the new pump. As you saw, restarted perfectly afterwards without any issue. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm going to continue doing a few more how-tos on this engine, and then we're going to throw it on my mud bar and hopefully make some really good footage this summer. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy my channel.